I figured it out, you guys. I figured out Bamboo Labs' secret plan for global domination. And in this video, I'm going to share what I think it is and what it means for the next decade of 3D printing. Let's dive in. Without question, the biggest 3D printing news of 2022, if not of the last five years, was the massive splash of Bamboo Labs onto the scene with their X1 and X1 Carbon. This printer took the world by storm and even had the most die-hard Voron and Prusa acolytes genuinely blown away. The printer was a quantum leap forward in consumer 3D printing, and yet it came from an upstart a new company that literally nobody had heard of a year ago, but a company that was actually able to deliver on pre-orders with an end product that genuinely delivered on its promises despite being a Kickstarter. Now, I've spoken to a lot of people in the industry over the last few months, especially when the even lower priced Bamboo Labs P1P came out and all of them said the same thing. I just don't understand how they can sell this printer with these features for this price. They must be losing money. And that's when it hit me. I realized exactly what Bamboo Labs is doing. And it's a playbook that has worked time and time again by brilliant entrepreneurs all the way up to Elon Musk. In fact, I think that Bamboo Labs is using the same strategy as Tesla, Bugatti, and McLaren. So here's the playbook. Step one create a top level product with insane performance and truly innovative technology for only the select few people who can afford it. Sell it at cost or even at a loss. Remember the original Tesla Roadster, a $120,000 super impractical sports car with impressive speeds. As Elon himself admitted, this car was created for three purposes only, to get Tesla's name out there to ramp up production and work out the kinks, and to raise money for the next car. Or how about the Bugatti Veyron? You know, the car that broke the world record for top speed of a production car. Well, like the X1 Carbon, it made lots of waves and headlines when this unknown company resprung from the ashes and was beating out the likes of established players like Ferrari and Lamborghini. What most people didn't realize though, is that Volkswagen, the parent company of Bugatti, actually lost six and a quarter million on every single Veyron they sold, despite its $1.2 million price tag. That amounted to a $2.3 billion loss, all in the name of scaling, marketing, and brand reputation. McLaren, makers of the legendary F1, stopped selling cars altogether for over a decade producing just 108 cars in total. That's right, friends. I'm just going to come out and say it. I suspect that Bamboo Labs is, or at least was, losing money on the X1 series pre-orders. Now, I'm fairly confident that they have raised a tremendous amount of money, enough that they can actually afford to lose it on every single printer they sell. Fortunately, the story doesn't end there for any of these companies. It's just the first step in their strategy. Step two, bask in the glory. The insane amount of press coverage and the buzz of respected industry insiders talking about your product and its category shifting performance. Let people wonder how you can afford to do it for such a price. Now, whether it was the Bugatti Veyron at only $1.2 million or the McLaren F1 or the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, we've all seen the reviews. We've seen the Jeremy Clarksons of the world remark at how ridiculously fast the Veyron is with high budget spectacles on BBC's Top Gear to test out its top speed. We've also seen how every single influencer in the 3D printing space who has one of the X1 Carbons has basically shifted to it as their daily driver printer. Basically, the X1 was all that anyone could talk about and every voice that we trust in 3D printing has already given it the thumbs up. Meanwhile, the company is losing money on every unit, or at least on the initial ones, but they are gaining more publicity and brand awareness and reputation than money could ever buy. Now, let's turn that into market domination. Step three, reinvest all of the money you've brought in into R&D to develop your next products. 
Leveraging your reputation, you can now go in two different directions. Ultra high end, like the Bugatti Chiron, or more mass market versions of your initial product, which will be less costly because you'll use the tools, facilities, knowledge, and even many of the same parts and R&D in the next version. If you go in this direction, you will use the economies of scale to drive down costs while using the benefits of your now extremely valuable reputation to charge more than a new entrant like you were a few months or years ago could possibly charge in the market. Plus, you can strip out some of the unnecessary bells and whistles that the average consumer just won't need. In other words, bring down your cost to produce the product while trading on your brand recognition to sell a mid-market or upper mid-market product. Obviously, at this point, you're already turning a profit on these. And by the way, while Bugatti chose to only go in one of these two directions, selling insane one-off cars and two to $4 million Chirons, you don't necessarily have to choose just one direction yourself. In the case of McLaren, they started selling both the hypercar types of cars like the P1s and Senna's and Ava's to ultra-wealthy people like billionaires and normal supercars like the GT, 670S, 765S, and so on to people who are just low-key rich AF. Step four, rinse and repeat steps three and four until you are beating even the most established manufacturers at their own game whether that is the higher end or the mid-market lower end, by selling a higher quality product at the same price or less than your competitors could ever afford to sell it for. Leverage the technological lead that you've established by having so many of your next generation products in use worldwide with real testing hours so that nobody can catch up to you. In the higher end case or path, this is exactly what Bugatti has done with the Chiron. Whereas in the past, the only game in town for real hypercars were special edition Ferraris that came out every 10 years like the F40 or F50 or Enzo, today, Bugatti dominates a huge portion of that market segment. Now, if you go the mass market case, this is precisely what McLaren and to an even larger extent, Tesla have done. 15 years ago, if you wanted a nice car, you probably bought a BMW, Audi, Mercedes, or Cadillac. Who had heard of Tesla? Or Bamboo Lab, for that matter. Today, however, the little upstart Tesla makes four out of the top six selling electric cars in America, which is the future of cars, let's face it, beating out all of these companies and more. Similarly, McLaren announced back in 2019 that they were hitting record sales, increasing by almost 50% per year. And honestly, are you surprised? These companies, companies like Tesla, are not winning because their products are just cheaper. They're winning because they have innovative technology, whether it's full self-driving mode, advanced electric powertrains, improved safety systems, or other bells and whistles, or just faster printing with LiDAR and AI recognition. And they're doing this for the same or less than their more established competitors. Tesla, for example, has millions and millions of hours of data with which to improve their autopilot systems and over a decade's worth of experience in producing efficient electric drivetrains, neither of which Mercedes or BMW can even come close to. Now this makes Tesla's products not only desirable, but much more trendy and just an overall better deal for the consumer. When faced with two choices, one that is the established player, the type of brand that your mom or dad dreamt of buying, but has fewer features and costs slightly more, or the new trendy upstart with more features at a better price and less history, well, which one are you gonna choose? How much is brand history and reputation really worth to you? especially when the upstart company's recent reputation has been almost nothing but slam dunks and everyone you trust is using their products. And that, my friends, brings us to step five, dominate the market and expand from there. With your superior products and your ability to sell them at the same or even lower prices as your established competitors, people are going to be lining up to buy your products. So you'd better be investing a lot of that very considerable profit that you're making 
back into building new factories and scaling up production. Now, keep your foot on the gas if you can, because your goal is now to roll out your products to anyone who wants them. And let's face it, thanks to the previous four steps, that's pretty much everyone. At this point, your competitors are pretty far in your rear view mirror. That little issue you had about being an unknown upstart with no brand reputation, nobody's talking about that anymore. You're the man now, dog. Oh, and all that money you lost in the beginning selling your premium product at a loss, you've more than made up for it. In fact, you're not only profitable on your newer mid-market products, but your economies of scale now mean that you're profitable on all your products. Now, it's time to take all of these advantages that you've painstakingly built for yourself and tackle the next challenge. Look at your competitor's plate over there and see what other goodies they have that you can reach out and snatch away. Maybe you go after the B2B market or the niche high-end luxury market. Or what about new competitors who serve other wildly popular market niches that you haven't even begun to exploit? At this point, you can stop at nothing short of world domination. So where are we now? Well, right now with Bamboo Labs, we have just stepped into step four, cycle one. To review, yes, Bamboo has probably been losing money on the X1 and X1 Carbon, but they've gained plenty in return. Reputation, brand awareness, usage data, relationships, and with the release of the P1P, their lower cost but still upper mid-market product, they will sell out, obliterating the other competitors in that price point, such as the Prusa MK3S Plus. Now this will put their product in many, many more hands than the X1 did, and further quiet any concerns that any of you have about reputation, longevity, reliability, and so on. What comes next? Most likely, we will see Bamboo Lab producing a $250 to $300 mass market entry-level printer in the next couple of years, like the Tesla Model 3, as they rinse and repeat steps three and four. Now, this printer won't have the same performance of, say, the X1 or the P1P, but it will leverage the learning, R&D, and parts from those products to still beat out the other competitors in that price range by a wide margin, even if they scramble to catch up. Bamboo may do a couple of iterations on this, for example, dropping their next printer down to only $400 or $500 first until they've adequately conquered the market one segment at a time. Now, depending on when that happens, we will likely also see a higher end bamboo printer at some point, for example, with a larger print volume or IDEX. Though for now, I suspect that the X1 is going to remain at the top of the line. Suffice it to say, if I were a company like Creality, who is very good at mass producing products, but has never really been all that good at moving that innovation needle, I'd be shaking in my boots about what happens when Bamboo Lab reaches step five. And if I worked at Prusa, on the other hand, I'd either be frantically working on revamping whatever is planned for the Prusa XL and the MK4, or I'd be polishing up my CV. One way or another, this guarantees only one thing. We, as 3D printing enthusiasts and consumers, are about to get much better printers, much more affordably, and a whole lot more innovation as this competition heats up. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please make sure to give a like and a subscribe and maybe consider supporting my work on Patreon. I'd love to move out into a proper studio where I can film better videos for all of you. Thanks and happy 3D printing. Thank <laughs> you.